Hello, my name is David DeVore, and I will be discussing the method of characteristics in differential equations. First, let's give a little overview about the method of characteristics. What the method of characteristics does is, let's take this wave, for example. If we're given some initial condition for a wave, how do we know it's going to act as it propagates along time? The way that we do that is by getting something called characteristic equations from the wave equation. And what that do is it'll be able to kind of show us how this wave is going to act throughout time. Um, this uh, method also reduces a partial differential equation to an ordinary differ differential equation. And so for our case, we're going to be looking at the wave equation that we are very accustomed with. Um, u in respect to t twice uh, equals c squared times u respect to x twice. But we're going to write this equation a little differently. We're going to go ahead and bring the right side over to the left just so we have um, u with respect to t twice minus c squared u with respect to x twice is equal to zero. To find the characteristic equations from our two-dimensional wave equation, what we're going to want to do is simplify this into two separate one-dimensional wave equations. To do that, we're going to go ahead and factor this two-dimensional wave equation into these two separate equations. Now to prove that this works, if you take either one of these and expand these out, you'll get this equation right here. And as you can see, those two middle terms will cancel, which this will match up perfectly with our original equation. So with that being the case, we're going to go ahead and set a w and a v equal to these two parts of the factoring. And we're going to go ahead and use these to simplify them even further into creating two one-dimensional wave equations. The next step to finding the characteristic equation is we're going to look at w and v that we set earlier, but let's focus on w for our case right now. As you can notice, the notation for the partial derivatives is a little different on this slide, notated as just ut minus c ux. Now the reason for that is that I believe it's kind of easier to see this process with a simplified version instead of looking at frac um, fractions. But that's just my case, and hopefully this doesn't confuse you too much. So first, we want w to look like our original wave equation, which is just utt minus c squared uxx is equal to zero. Now to do that, we're going to take our starting equation here, and we're going to take the partial of w with respect to t, and then also with respect to x. When we do that, we get these two equations right here. wt is equal to utt minus c uxt, and then wx is equal to utx minus c u x x. So in this next step's a little weird. We're going to take our w with respect to x and multiply both sides by c. And you'll see why that becomes important. So now we have our w t and w x term. Let's go ahead and add both of those together. And when we do that, we get this big long equation. But as you notice, these two middle terms, kind of like in our factoring, will cancel out. But now the difference between those two steps that we've done, the factoring and this, is that now we have the original 2D wave equation equal to this one-dimensional wave equation, but in respect, or in terms of W instead of U. With that being the case, we could do the same process for V, and we would get this, this equation here, um, V with respect to T minus C times V with respect to X is equal to zero, and we also just found our w, which is w with respect to t plus c times w with respect to x. And now we have our two first order wave equations derived from the second order wave equation, and we will be able to use these to create characteristic equations. So now let's look at our w one dimensional wave equation with w with respect to t plus c times w with respect to x is equal to zero. So we know that w is in terms of x and t, but also let's assume that x is dependent on t, so we have x is equal to x in, which is a function of t. So now with that being the case, you can kind of say that w is a function of x, which is a function of t, and w is also a function of t, which essentially boils w down into just a function of t. And since w is just a function of one variable, we can go ahead and take the ordinary differential equation of w in terms of t. But when you do that, you're going to have to use the multivariable chain rule 
and you'll end up getting this kind of mess right here. We'll have the partial of w with respect to t times the ordinary derivative of dt dt plus the partial of w in terms uh, or with respect to x times x with respect or in terms of t. We can go ahead and cancel out our dt over dt because that'll just be one. And so now we're going to play the matching game. And what I mean by that, if you compare this to our original equation, we can see that here is our partial of w with respect to t, and here is our partial of w with respect to x. So with that being the case, we can say that dx dt is equal to c, and dw dt is equal to 0. Now what does that mean? What that means is extremely important. That means that w is constant with respect to t when our rate of change of x in terms of time is equal to some constant variable c. So let's go ahead and integrate dx over dt is equal to z, and we get this equation right here. x is equal to c times t plus some um, coefficient we'll just call x0. Now this is what we've been wanting to find. That is the characteristic equation for our one-dimensional wave w. So now here's a little geometric representation of what's going on. So our first picture here is a snapshot of w of x on t at time is equal to zero. So here's our initial condition. You may remember this slide from the beginning. But let's plop some point x naught or x zero on this graph. And then we can go ahead and use that formula that we found, the graph of x is equal to ct plus x naught. And this slope right here would be 1 over c. But as you remember, since our um, since this is increasing by that constant c, we know that w is going to be constant all along that line. I mean, if we drew that line from x naught right here, we knew the solution for w would never be changing. And that's the same if you draw all these lines with the same formula, and it's just increasing by that constant c, all of these would be the, have the same constant value for w, which is our original wave. So let's jump back to creating a general solution for um, our wave w. So let's look at when time is equal to 0. So we're going to say that w of x comma 0 is equal to some f of x, just kind of a const or a, a initial condition that we have dealt with before. But first, let's plug t back into that characteristic that we have, the x is equal to ct minus x naught. When we plug in t is equal to 0, we see that x is just equal to that initial x naught. So we can go ahead and plug that back into our initial condition. So now we have w of x naught comma 0 is equal to f of x naught. Well, this, the w of x naught comma 0, that's essentially representing our characteristic equation. And we know that if that's representing our characteristic equation, that w is going to equal, no matter at what point in time, is going to equal what this, what w of x naught comma 0 is. So we can go ahead and set w of x comma t equal to all of this, which essentially is saying that w of x comma t is equal to our initial condition f of x naught. But let's solve for x naught. So we can just go ahead and manipulate our characteristic equation to find that x naught is equal to x minus ct. And we can go ahead and plug our x minus ct for x naught up here in our initial conditions and so now we have w of x comma t is equal to f of x minus ct. Now this represents the family of all of the characteristics that could ever be drawn and what this will do will propagate the initial condition of w along that t axis. So here's kind of a little animation to kind of demonstrate by what we just found. So we know that if we just plop some point x naught down on our initial condition for our w wave, we can go ahead and draw that characteristic line going out from x naught where this is increasing at that constant c speed. So we know that w will be the same along this line. But let's go ahead and draw all these different characteristic lines. Now you could draw an infinite amount, but for our case I just drew a couple. 
So we drew all these lines. They all are increasing at that same constant speed. So W is going to be the same on all these characteristics. So we know that we can just propagate the wave across time. Since we know that W is not going to be changing along these lines, we're essentially stretching the wave across the time axis. And if we drew infinite number of these lines, of these characteristic equations, it would just form one solid red sheet, which would form the wave that we want to find. So that was finding the characteristic equations for the wave equation. But you can find characteristic equations for all different kinds of partial differential equations. You can find them for linear, semilinear, and quasi-linear, which are just three different types of equations shown here. And it may be different on how you find them in terms of manipulating the um, differential equation, but essentially you can do the same thing. And for further studies, what you could look into are the D'Alembert's formula, which creates this general form of the wave equation, but you can see how the characteristics will act in different situations, and also a real-world application of what method the characteristics are used for is modeling traffic in traffic flow problems. So if you're interested in kind of a real-world aspect of characteristics, you can go ahead and look there. Thank you so much for listening to me discuss the method of characteristics, and hopefully you can leave here today with understanding a little more about how characteristics function in differential equations. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and email me at my email below, daviddevore11 at augustana.edu. Thank you very much, and have a good day.